Welcome to the John Forte Show, presented by Veterans Ford on Veterans Highway in New Orleans. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the John Forte Show. Ken Berthelot sitting in for Mike Dettelier today. Mike will be back next week. And it's our pleasure to welcome you to this edition of the John Forcade Show. John Forcade with us, of course, and with us in this segment always is the owner and the president and CEO and everything at Veterans Ford, Mr. Robert Weinman. John, Thanks. Robert, Thanks welcome to the show. Again. Thank you. you. John, Robert, man, yeah. I tell you what, when I pulled up today, I didn't know if I was at a Maserati dealership or what, but you <laughs> wasn't kidding. You pulled up today in your nice Ford, and it looks like a Maserati in that front end, and I, I feel honored to be You're looking at that, the Ford Fusion, which I'd have to agree, I think it looks like an Aston Martin. It's, it's a beautiful car, and uh, you know I could drive any vehicles we've got in stock, and that's the one I'm, I'm going with. So. Uh, it is, it is, well, it is I know, I know pretty vehicle. soon you'll be able to drive something else called a, a Ford F-150. The new aluminum one, we expect the uh, new aluminum body at F-150 to be out here in uh, early January. In fact, we're having a, a huge show, uh, op grand opening, a truckathon, if you will, December 12th, which is a Friday. Uh, come on to Veterans Ford, see the new F-150. It's uh, uh, going to meet everybody's expectation. I, I think it's going to, in fact, exceed everyone's expectations on what Ford's going to do as a market leader in the uh, truck segment. So I think one of the most important and probably exciting things for people who like trucks, you've said this a number of times uh, on the show, is that the, the gas rating for the new F-150s with that body you're talking about, rated as high as 30 miles to the gallon? Well, they announced it now, and what uh, they're telling me, it is uh, going to be 26, which is uh, segment leading, 26 miles to the gallon. Um, very excited about that. Again, Ford showing its leadership in the truck segment. Uh, 37 years running now has been the top selling truck uh, out there. So Veterans Ford, of course, we have them. Plenty of stock to choose from, both the 2014s. And come December 12th, uh, Veterans Ford, uh, that's a Friday, come down and see the new F-150. And before we touch on the Saints in this segment with you, Robert, uh, when we're talking about that big truckathon coming up on Friday, December the 12th, you're going to have some of the F-150s there. If somebody wants to buy one there, can they purchase one that day or do they have to wait till January? No, we'll set it up for pre-sale. The, um, the new F-150 will be there to show everyone what it is. Uh, if you're interested in the product, uh, come, come over to Veterans Ford, see it. We'll, we'll set up uh, retail sales. Uh, we'll know when our stock is coming in. But every day, Veterans Day is sales day. I know it's uh, truck town, it's Veterans Ford. We're, um, we're here to uh, move the units. And I told John coming in that I was just happy after the Saints game last night to watch you and John smiling today. Well, to there, do, there's huh? not much smiling going today <laughs> in the city. Uh, you know, Robert, three games in a row at home. You would think they'd win one of the games. Yeah, you know, they, they haven't lost a home game in so long with both uh, Peyton and Drew Brees quarterback, and they haven't lost a primetime game in, in for, forever. And it's just, they stunk up the place again. Uh, I mean, it was a close ball game, but it just, to me, they stunk it up a little bit in the second half again. What's going on with this team? Well, you know, the, the good side of this thing, the good news of it is, uh, at, um, the receiving core did their job. And if you look at the, the breezes was connecting, you know, he did have the one big interception, which was tough, but the receiving core showed up that they had not done that before. And that's what's exciting. The line is where I thought that was the, let the team down. Uh, they had no rushing game. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't do good on pass protection well. Brees had to throw quicker than he's, he usually does. And that was what was tough about the team. But th there were some highlights and there were some good parts. There, there was, I mean, Morgan, he had one rush for six, seven yards, one catch for 62 yards. I'm glad he took the spot of Cooks being injured. Uh, the running game wasn't there last night. The pressure that Drew took on, a, on, a, on certain plays was outstanding. Uh, from the standpoint of the defensive side for the Ravens, just put the pressure on Drew Brees. He did throw one pick that was costly, six. But overall, you're right, the passing game is back around again. But that's going to be normal with the Drew Brees. I'm still worried about our secondary. Our secondary is not getting the job done back there, Robert. No, without a doubt. I mean, that, that was for crushing blows to see, watch. Uh, and, of course, they've been devastated with injuries, as everyone knows. And that, that's where it's tough. I mean, if, you're, if you're, you're getting pressure on the quarterback, but you can't cover the secondary, then, you know, what's the point? They're just going to tear you apart. And that's what they did to and, us. And, Kenny, we talked about it prior to 
guess what? They tied for first place with a four and seven record. Go but you know, that. who's gonna win this division? Six and ten. Possibly six and ten. And, and that's and embarrassing. But you know what? That's the way the rules hey, set but up. The National Football League loves parity. They love a six and ten team to be able <laughs> to possibly be in the playoffs. By the way, real, real quick, Robert, do you find after a win more people come in and, and maybe purchase cars? Maybe after a loss, traffic a little bit slower in the store? I think yeah. I think there's an emotional side to this and, and I think it reflects in everybody in uh, uh, you know, in any business, um, and there's there's a letdown. You know, it's it's tough, particularly with the Saints. I mean, you know, people are very passionate about the team, as I am. So it uh, I think tend to affect you know people's attitudes when it comes across the board. You bet. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll be talking more about the Saints. And Robert will join us a little bit later on in the show to talk about some more of the very special deals that you'll find at Veterans Ford. All of that coming back in just a moment with more on the John Schwartzade Show. Ken Berthelot sitting in for Mike the Dogey. Welcome back to the John Fourcade Show presented by Veterans Ford. And again, one of the great deals at Veterans Ford, the 2014 brand new Ford Focus Sedan SE. The sale price, you can't beat fifteen seven forty five for the young person going to school, going to college, or just wanting good gas mileage. You can't beat it right there. Welcome back to the John Fourcade Show presented by Veterans Ford. Ken Berthelot sitting in for Mike Detillier, who is back next week. We are in studio today, back at Veterans Ford next week. John, goodness, where do you start when you talk about the New Orleans Saints? And it's, the, the dome just felt dead last night. Mike, it's, I mean, Mike, I'm sorry. Ken, <laughs> Ken it's, uh, you know, Mike and I is always back and forth Absolutely. on this, but you write about it. It's a shame when you go to the Superdome, they lose 34-27. I mean, look at the yardage. The Saints get 525 yards. A lot of that came at the end of the game, uh, and the other, they gave up 449. But overall, where has this team been the last three weeks? How do you lose three consecutive home games when you've been all year long? They talk about, you know, unbeaten in the Superdome with Peyton and Drew Brees over the years, primetime football. I mean, this is un unbelievable. If you look at this whole well, look, uh, package, I mean, you can see for a set 182 yards, uh, two touchdowns. We're going to talk about the defense and what they gave up. Let's let's go over the big picture first. The big picture is are right, still Sean Payton and uh, Drew Brees have never beaten the Baltimore Ravens. Now you have a three-game homestand, a right. three-game homestand, and a chance to turn your pathetic season up to this point around. And you lay an egg, not one time, not two times, but all three games. And that, that goes back to, to some problems we're going to talk about. And I'm not talking about problems in the locker room. I'm talking about poor tackling. Yes. I'm talking about poor defensive play and with the defensive backs. I think everybody knows what the injuries, the problems they're having there. I mean, when you got to sign somebody off of a practice squad from somewhere else and he's playing, he's starting, that tells you the kind of problems you're well, having. Well, Kenny, also, you, you get, let's, let's, let's flip the sides over there offensively. You know, we know Drew's got his issues at time, but let's look at how bad this offensive line is protecting him. He's getting pressure. He's rushing his throws. He's getting sacked. He got sacked twice, four times last night. I know he got sacked twice and he fumbled and recovered his own ball. But overall, there's no running game last night. And this is a good defensive unit that Baltimore Ravens came in here with, Ken. I look at the way that this whole team's going about its way right now. There's nothing that other than Drew Brees there's nobody else that's a leader on this football club. Well, we've been waiting to see Joe Morgan. So right off the bat, first series, Morgan breaks off the big play. He gets all the way down. Saints are now, and everybody's excited. Saints are down on the goal line. You've got fourth and goal from the one. And now in Peyton, Sean Payton's career, fourth and goal from the one. They are one and nine, getting the ball into the end zone. Come Kenny, on, man. You I get mean, down to the one-yard line, and you got the biggest tight end that can catch a football, can outrun and out jump people. You, you run, 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 run. And then you run, you pull a guard on fourth and goal at the one. He gets a guy trailing him, makes the play behind the line of scrimmage. You lose a yard or two. I mean, the play selection on the goal line was, was, was horrible last well, night. Well, here's Throw the, the ball to, to, to Jimmy Graham. All right, the one of the problems I have, and I agree with you on throwing the ball to Jimmy Graham, but if you're going to run Ingram at that point, don't run him at the strength of the Baltimore defense. My goodness, go take it to the outside, use something different, but you're going after the strength of the Baltimore defense that has proven this year they can stop short yardage plays like that? Kenny, with that play you saw on fourth 
down. When they pull the guard, I don't know who, why you keep pulling guards on that one yard, but they did pull a guard. That ball was supposed to be popped to the outside, and Ingram decided to go inside, but the pressure from the inside was already there. He had no other choice. He couldn't have gone anywhere. It was a poor play calling. It, it should have gone off, off tackle early in the, uh, in the first down play, or maybe throw the ball to Jimmy Graham like they did at the end of the game. You got a guy like Jimmy Graham, first out throw it. If you don't get it, then you can run second or third or fourth. It's bad play calling inside the red zone when they're getting down there all year long. Now, some people criticized Sean Payton for not taking the field goal there. I like the fact no, that go look, for it. this is a but this is a horrible year. Go for it. Go for the juggler vein right off. Give your team something. I'm glad he went for it. Look, if he would have settled for three, that would have been okay too. Right. But the fact that he went for it, that doesn't bother me. What bothers me is that when you don't make it, all of a sudden your defense now gives up a couple of big plays before you can blink an eye. Uh, Baltimore is at midfield. They're going down. They're scoring. And you've got a totally reverse situation. You've been there. What does yes. it do to a team? What does it do to an offense and a defense to have that happen to you so quickly? Well, the thing is, it, it, it was early in the game. It's their first drive. They go down there. If you don't get it, that's fine. I'm all for going for it. When you had a big play, 67-yard run, you get down there, you don't score. It puts them backed up, and that's fine. Later in the game, he kicks a field goal. But in that situation, I'm all for that. Your defense goes out there, and they understand, hey, you know, we got to hold. But they just kind of let them go down the field on them. But when we talk about the defense, Kenny, this defense right now is hurting so bad on the back end. Their front guys aren't bad. Their linebackers aren't bad, but their back end. You got one player, basically, if you want to call Kenny Vaccaro uh, a pretty good, decent safety, but he's more at the line of scrimmage. Uh, Lewis is the only cornerback they got. They're hurting in other areas back there. And, and it's not that they're getting bombs on them in this football game. It was the short passing game and the run after catch. You know, the yak yardage they talk about. That's the thing that killed the Saints last night was the defensive secondary. But they still were in the football game and the Saints took the lead at halftime. I just don't know what happened in the second half. But John, half. the defensive secondary, and yes, we knew there would be problems there. That doesn't account for the missed tackles yes. by the linebackers, by poor tackling by the defensive line who didn't get enough sacks. That, that's what really concerns you, me about this There's two sides team. of this. You got to rush for 182 yards. That's on your linebacker, your D-line. They threw the ball and missed tackles in the second. That's your secondary. So it's a combination of everybody joining here. But you look at it, too. Where's the pressure? There is still one sack. One sack. I mean, the Saints is one sack, one week, three another. One week, one week, one week, two sacks. There's no consistent there with the defensive line. You know, in the big picture, I think Sean Payton and Drew Brees wanted to build a team that could get Drew Brees another Super Bowl ring before he retires. This team's gone in the opposite direction, and I don't think in two years they're going to be able to put a team together. Bad scouting. They got to go with the Super Bowl. Uh, look, Won't happen. They have scouting department issues, players they brought in here, and then they're going to have you know salary cap problems next year. Uh, Drew Brees is not going to renegotiate his contract. He's already stated that to people. And this team is going to be in some deep trouble after the season. First of all, they're still fighting for the playoff spot because they're that bad, and this division's that bad. At four and seven, they tied. Uh, uh, six and ten might win it. Well, we'll talk about playoff spot and a division that's really bad as we take a look at the National Football League entirely. But as far as the Saints go, we'll pick the Saints at Pittsburgh later on in the show. Cross your fingers. They've got a long, long road to go, and it's not real pretty. We're going to take a break and be back on the John Forte Show, presented by Veterans Ford, right after this. Welcome back to the John Forte Show presented by Veterans Ford, the F-150 Crew Cab 2014 with all the discounts under 30,000, an unbelievable steal. And you can see it first here in New Orleans at the Truckathon on Friday, December the 12th at Veterans Ford on Veterans Highway, right by Division Street, Veterans and Division. Don't want to miss it. I know John will be there. He's all excited about 26 to 30 miles a gallon. Unbelievable. Welcome back to the John Forcade Show presented by Veterans Ford. Ken Berthelot sitting in for Mike Dettelier, who is back next week. And we're out of the studio and back at Veterans Ford next week. You'll be there. You'll be looking at that big F-150 crew cab. I know you're excited about that. Get a couple of Saints players with you to give them a little pep talk on the ride up to Pittsburgh. Maybe they can oh. go with you instead of the, the, the flight and the bus. My, my pep talk would be a foot somewhere <laughs> you know where. Uh, you know, get them some F-150s and maybe drive, make them drive up there on their own. But, All right, here's uh, the thing. Mm. We're going to hear, as a matter of fact, we've already started to hear 
Oh, we got to look at film. We got to correct our mistakes. And, and look, that's that's just coaches speak, players speak. Somebody has got to take a lead on this team. Somebody's got to start doing something different. What do they do? Who steps up? I, I like what you just said there. Somewhat other than Drew Brees. Listen yes. to me. It's week in yes. and week out. We hear from the Drew Brees show. The heck with Drew Brees. We love him. We got to find another player in this football club. Don't care who it is. You know, Kenny Vaccaro stepped up last week and made some comments that people got offended by it. But you know what? He's saying what he believes, and he sees in that locker room and around practice what we don't see. There's players in this football club who pretty much packed it in and just happen to get a paycheck and be here. Some other veteran players need to step up to the plate. The ones who don't say much, you know what? I'm going to pick a name. I would love to see a Marcus Colston do something differently. He's just a quiet guy. He's quiet. Go to work. He, but, but, but he's you know a what? That's not but his he, personality. But you know what? Maybe somebody needs to be that Kenny, change that personality for once in a while. Look, and I'm not saying he needs to do it all the time, but we've seen the Drew Brees in the huddle. We hear his conversation. Let somebody else say something. All right, let's look at the matchup. While we talk about the matchup, let's talk about who might step up because for a player like Marcus Colston, he would have to totally step out of character, which can be done, but I'm not sure if he can do it. Now you're going up against a team, rather, that's got a record that is yours reverse, seven and four. Everybody in that division, you know, man, they're coming off a bye week. Everybody in that division has got a great record. They're all up there at seven and four. And guess what? They're, they're fighting for survival. That team won't be flat. The Steelers are going to be so ready for a Saints team that struggles on the road. Look, Bell is a quality running back, and he sees what this guy did last night to us in running the football with Baltimore Ray. 4.9 yards to carry. He's the real deal as a running back. And then Roethlisberger, you know what he's done? <laughs> Two games in a row, he's thrown six he's, touchdowns. He's so, licking his chops, Rob. I mean, you know, they got Brown as a receiver. His defensive secondary. And, and the Saints haven't beaten Cincinnati in that division, Baltimore in that division, nor Cleveland. So they got one more shot to beat someone in that division. It's Pittsburgh, but it's at Pittsburgh. Maybe they'll go on the road and win this football game. We'll find out in our picks later on what we both decide on. But this is one tough football team they got to go play against. They're fighting. Pittsburgh is fighting for a playoff spot. As we look around the National Football League, and let's go back to the NFC South because this is, a, a, again, to go. A, I don't know whether to call it the NFC South or the NFC Worst or the Let NFC see, Going think, South. You, hey, Tampa Bay still got a shot, don't they? T Tampa, Tampa Bay has got a shot. If you look at the standings, somebody could win this division with a six and 10 record, even if it is uh, uh, a seven, you know, it, it could be Tampa, but guess what? You go on the road and what happens to a team like this, usually uh, you get knocked out in the first round. Now, the only nice thing about this is you win this division, you're at home. And right. that's the and, and that a lot of people are griping and complaining about that, saying it shouldn't happen, that a team with a pathetic record should not be able to host a, a home game against a wild card team with a better record that's got to uh, go on the road. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. But can this can, can the Saints even win a game at home if they win this division against a better team with a wild card record coming in? Well, let's just say the Saints make it to the playoffs. I don't care if they're six and ten. When the playoffs begin, zero and zero. Team coming in can be thirteen and three, zero and zero. It doesn't matter. That's how the rules are set up. You win your division, you host the game. Now, with that being said. The Saints still have to win a division by beating Atlanta, Carolina, and Tampa Bay. That will get them the conference division by having those wins. But they still might have to beat either Chicago or Pittsburgh on the road. It doesn't get easy for them. Okay, let's look at the record here. Uh, three times, San Diego in 2008 and Denver in 2011 with eight and eight records, win divisions. They're at home. Seattle in 2010, seven and nine record, beat the Saints at right. home. The Saints are a wild card. Seattle's at home with the same record as the Saints at, at, in that season. And guess what? They all get beat the, the next game out. So it is very tough for a team I know what you're saying. It's a new season, but if you haven't had a lot of success, that doubt is in your mind somewhere that, man, maybe we can't play with these guys. It doesn't seem to come together. Why? You know, Kenny, I always believe this. Get into the playoffs and you worry about it after that. It's a one-game season after that. Right now, you got five left. You can compete and you get yourself into the playoffs. Once you make the playoff, you throw all records out. And the Saints are pretty good at home. Maybe they'll win this home playoff game. If they make it as the d division uh, champs, they host a home game. You just don't know. You might get the luck of the draw. Say you win a, a playoff game. You go on the road against a team that you 
probably can stack up against. You just don't know yet. You won't find that out, but you got to get there first. If you don't get there first, all this we talk about now is foot null and void. And how about the Saints and Atlanta when they play each other again? Both of them probably with losing records right. at the time, yet they're playing probably for the right to host a, a game in the playoffs and be in the playoffs. And it's, that's an important one because if the Saints don't win that one, then even if they finish tied with Atlanta, they would not get the tie. Right. right. That's the whole key to it right now. If the New Orleans Saints were to go up against Atlanta, they have to beat Atlanta. And then if they both end up with the same division record, then the next uh, qualify down the list. Uh, figure out who goes in as a qualified team for the playoffs. Uh, it shouldn't come to that. The Saints take care of their business. I think they can back into this thing with a 7-9 and nine record. I got them going 7-9 and nine and, and winning the division. Hey, kudos to a couple of Saints people because we saw some good catches from Jimmy Graham, some good catches from Marcus Colston, but how about Odell Beckham, Newman oh. High School at LSU, and he goes out and makes what, what now is being called the best catch of the year, the big one-hander. Of course, Dallas rallies and, and takes the game anyway. But Odell Beckham, according to ESPN, they've got him listed as two of the best catches, top ten catches of the season. Guess what, John? You talk to people at LSU, they said, man, we, we, we've been seeing him do this for a long time. This isn't nothing new. He went up against some really good defensive backs at LSU. We've been seeing him do this for a long time. You guys are just seeing this now. Well, he's got, you saw the size of his hands? In ten, the glove. Ten inch hands for Odell Beckham. Ten in the inch gloves hands. that he wears look like a doggone goalie for a <laughs> soccer glove, man. The guy's phenomenal. He's got some hands. There's a catch right here. This is I mean, just just not just the catch, but the way he laid he laid out right here, getting past interference, one handed, brings it down. This guy is phenomenal. It's uh, it's awesome to watch him play. And uh, in his pregame warm up, he's doing that pregame warm up. If you come from Newman, you can play, right? Ask the Mannings, ask Odell. There's no doubt about it. But no state championships for Newman either. Oh, he had to get that in as a note. What, did you get one? Show? We'll talk no. about that later. <laughs> hey, back in just a moment. Ken Berthelot sitting in for Mike Dettelier on the John 4K Show presented by Veterans Ford. Back right after this with a look at the college scene. Welcome back to the John Forcade Show presented by Veterans Ford. And don't forget this great deal, the Ford Escape Titanium. That is the top of the line escape. And with all the sale prices and discounts, 26965 one of your favorite cars, John. I know you like that one a whole lot. It's Very a car, it, it, you know, the, the Ford Focus, I mean, the Ford Escape, the thing about it is, it's a little mini SUV. Some people don't like, yes. some, they don't like the big SUVs, they go to the small one. go to the mini, and, and mini one, you know, absolutely. Escape Come on, man, car. down to Veterans Ford Come and on, get man. that deal. Welcome back to the John Forcade Show, presented by Veterans Ford. Ken Berthelot sitting in for Mike Dettelier, who's back next week. And Mike and John are back at Veterans Ford at the dealership on Veterans, on Veterans Highway, right by Division Street next week. We're talking college football, and let's start with LSU at Texas A&M on Thanksgiving night. That's becoming the new closing rivalry uh, that uh, is going to be played on a Friday when it's played as an LSU home game the day after Thanksgiving and on Thanksgiving night because Texas A&M used to host Texas on right. that day when they played there. So well, let's talk about the strength of each. Well, the strength right now is uh, A&M's offense against uh, LSU's defense. That's that's the plus there for LSU's defense. They're much better on defense than LSU's offense. So I think LSU's defense can stop a far uh, a A&M team that's really up and down with their quarterback situation. Then you got. LSU's offense, they have no quarterback that can throw the football going against a real bad A&M defense. So, I mean, this could be a game in the 40s right here. And I think it's going to be a running attack of LSU versus a passing attack of A&M. Well, here's the problem with that LSU quarterback you just talked about. LSU has a pro-style offense. They need a pocket-passing quarterback, and they've got two spread-option quarterbacks that, that are made for running the football. So I'm kind of thinking and hoping that LSU finishes on a strong note. They put the hand, they put the ball in the hands of Leonard Fournette, and Leonard Fournette sort of has a, a, a end of the year coming out party and maybe blows it open and, and they go on to win that you game. You know what scares but, me on that is the fact that Leonard Fournette had five carries against Arkansas. What, five, five against Arkansas? Five. And then you look at the freshman from Oklahoma who broke a record, carried about 
We're going to yeah, talk about him second, in the next yeah, yeah, second. But it's I'm a whole lot for a the second. The amounts of carries he had compared to what Leonard Fournette It'll scare had. you. LSU, you got to get the ball to Leonard <laughs> Fournette because you can't throw the football. And uh, for LSU's defense, can they stop Texas A&M? Yeah, because LSU got a great secondary, and that's a big key to it. LSU's defense has stepped up lately in the season, has played well enough on the defense side of football. I think they can shut down A&M's passing attack, and we just got to find out it's going to be a thriller on Thanksgiving night. And I will be there with Jack and Cheryl doing the Coach's Cabana show live in College Station. I like that. Now, what scares me is we've heard so much talk in the last couple of years that don't get upset about Les Miles not developing players and winning. He wins 10 games a season. Guess what the talk is now? Hey, we ought to be happy that we're going to get that eighth win and continue the eight-win streak season <laughs> for so many years in a row. You know what? Hey, nah. it, you, you, you gotta you gotta lift yourself up where the the big boys are playing in that top four. I don't think it matters if you win seven games, eight games, or nine games. If you're not winning 10, 11, 12 games and, and playing for national championships, that's where the talk is. Why at LSU. aren't players being developed at LSU? Well, because they're not going out and get some of the, the quality players they should be getting. They're getting too many players that some of these uh, recruiting coaches are liking only because uh, they, they like them for whatever reason. You know, they're not the guys who can come in at LSU and play. And also, LSU's losing a lot of juniors after their junior season. They're leaving to go to the NFL draft. He puts a lot of play, but he's not getting the, the, the quality of players you would think that could step in and play on a regular basis. John, why? You're a quarterback. Why oh. has LSU not recruited a good drop back passer? Well, there's one kid here in two years named Chase Forkid. If you don't go after him, you're a fool, LSU. But overall, I'm telling you right now, they got to get him a pro style quarterback. You got a pro style coach in there, Cam Cameron, calling the plays. Why don't you play more to that? Zach Metlenberger was here last season, and he proved what a pro style guy can do. Not a dual threat, but a pro and the two guys they're recruiting now are dual threat quarterbacks. Explain that. Well, we'll pick LSU and Texas A&M. Let's move on to Tulane. And the first thing I'm going to say about Tulane, they're off this week. Can't lose. My disappointment with Tulane is, isn't it sad that the program is not at the status where they're in the SEC and LSU and Tulane aren't playing their season finale and this Kenny, week? I'm going to tell you why. That's the old they rivalry that no the longer players, takes place. They're not getting the players that they hope to get. they got to start getting some players to come to Tulane. Got a great facilities, new stadium. When you open that stadium, you got to put 30,000, 40,000 people in here to watch your games, but you can't get beat. Like you're getting beat nowadays, you got to be competitive and you got to compete for that AAC title if you want to get people to come to your game. And Tulane's got a great facility, they got to start getting players. This won't mean a lot to a lot of people, but when Tulane does host Temple and that season finale next weekend, it'll be the first time that Tulane and Temple met since the 1932 Sugar Bowl, the inaugural Sugar Bowl. You wish that there was going to be some special celebration for that, but there won't I, be. I heard you still got your ticket from that game. <laughs> Is that true? I think I called it, but uh, I've been around for a long time, <laughs> right after I did Moses parting the Red Sea when it was holding his hands up, which is where Touchdown Jesus came from for Notre Dame, but that's another story that's for another time. I uh, want to move on to the Egg Bowl. Now, if Ole Miss is going to win the Egg Bowl, which Bo Wallace is going to show up, the one with egg on his face or the one that played like John Fortgate played when he was at Ole Miss? Hey, I'll tell you this much. My last game ever in University of Mississippi was against Mississippi State, 1981, 34 seconds left. In the Egg Bowl, Mississippi State kicks a field goal on third down. They go up 17-14. They kick off to us with 34 seconds left, and the story has been written already. Drove down the field to the one-yard line. I scored a last winning touchdown on my college career. We won the Egg Bowl 21-17. Bo Wallace has got to come out and produce. Last season, he had a chance to win the game. He fumbled going into the end zone. Ole Miss is going to play at home. They're going to upset. I, I'm going to pick it later, but I'm going to tell you now. You know where I'm going. They're going to upset Mississippi State to knock them out of possible bowl uh, playoff possibility. Uh, wait for my pick on that in I the know, next but segment. You know what my pick is. Yeah, I know what your You'll pick is. You'll hear it is. later, but I'm picking it again now. For Southeastern Louisiana fans, they play in the football championship series where they actually get it right. There's a 24-team playoff field and championships are determined on the field, but watch what happens here. Southeastern Louisiana, Southland Conference team, highest rated in the polls at number 10, routes Nickel State as expected in their season finale, 62-3, to yet they don't get the automatic bid because by the tiebreaker system, boom, they're out. And you know what happens with Southeastern? It now becomes a bid process. They mm. can't bid enough money to, to get a home game, so they've got to go on a road to play at Sam Houston State as the highest ranked team in the Southland. That's going to be a tough road. They might get knocked out there. They've got yeah. their hands full all because of the dollar bid. As long as they're playing. They're in the playoffs. You know, right now, if I was in a playoff, I'm going to go play anywhere. 
Yeah, you better believe it. And by the way, Tim Rebo, new head football coach at Nichols. We'll talk about that. You and Mike can talk about that next week. He's going to recruit well, one of the best recruiters in the state of Louisiana. Watch the Nichols State football program. They are on the rise up with Tim Rebo, former Destrahan coach, former Nichols State assistant, uh, assistant at UL Lafayette. Watch the good things that happened there. We will take a break and be back with more on the John Forte Show presented by Veteran Ford right after this. Welcome back to the John Forte Show presented by Veterans Ford. Ken Berthelot sitting in for Mike Dettelier, who's back next week with John at the Veterans Ford uh, Studios, at the Veterans Ford Dealership, and that's on the corner of Veterans and Division. And we are going to focus, our player focus part of this, on a young man who has been outstanding, a true freshman for the University of Oklahoma, Samaj P. Ryan. What a year he's had, and what a game he had against Kansas this weekend. On the year, 214 carries, 1,400 yards plus 19 touchdowns. But this weekend, he carried 34 times for 427 yards, set an NCAA record, by the way, that was set one week before. And this young man against Kansas did everything. Well, there's no doubt about it. This young man, and the thing about it, Kenny, Look at the that. season began, he wasn't even a starting running back. Their starting running back went down with an injury. He stepped in a few times and made some great plays all year long, and he got the chance to play in this game against Kansas. And I don't care who you play against, Kansas, Nickel State, you know, uh, BYU, Notre Dame, he put up 427 yards rushing, and that's amazing. He broke uh, the, uh, the kid from uh, Wisconsin's record. Melvin Garden, 408. Against Nebraska the right. week before. And, so and didn't play the short. fourth quarter. He didn't play the fourth quarter. But that's the thing about this thing about college football. I mean, you love to see stuff like that. The guy's such, and he's a freshman. So LSU, in less miles, he's a freshman with 34 carries. 34. Leonard Fournette, five carries last week for 15 yards. Are you kidding me? Uh, Oklahoma found a way to get the football in the hands of a young playmaker. So why can't LSU get the, uh, the football in the hands of Leonard Fournette? And they've got to do it against Texas A&M. They're not going to win with the passing game. It's the motto of Les Miles. He likes to rotate three running backs, four running backs. I saw the game against Arkansas, Leonard Fournette, and what happened, one series he's in, one series out. Next series he's out, next series he's in. You can't do that in, in college football with these awesome running backs. He's a stud. Play your stud like Oklahoma did with their running back. Let him run. Well, let me tell you, if Texas A&M can, can shut down that running game, then LSU has no passing game to go against. And if the LSU defense isn't sharp, guess who might be catching passes against them? A young man from Edna Carr High School, Devante Speedy Noel. Now, if you've been watching some television broadcasts, I'm not sure if Speedy has changed his last name because everyone is now saying Noel. It's pronounced no. Season stats, 40 catches, 500 plus yards, four touchdowns. And uh, Speedy has played in every game but one where he had a slight injury. Take a look at him, John. He's got all the moves of a nifty receiver. Well, there's no doubt about it. He's from here locally. We know what he's Ed done McCarr. here. Ed Nicar High School on the West Bank, and he's, he performed very well for A&M as a true freshman. Good vertical. One of the top recruiting players here in Louisiana last season, committed to going to uh, Texas A&M, and since he walked into A&M, he has you know, started and played. He's that kind of a football player. He brings a lot to the table. But the only thing about him, though, he's not a big guy. And you got to stay healthy. And I think if he stays healthy, he's going to be dynamic, depending on who's throwing the football there at Florida, I mean, at, Florida, at uh, Texas A&M. And if this young man can compete like he's competing, you know, in the next three years, he could be uh, playing on Sundays. If he was a big guy, he'd be playing quarterback. But because he's not, he's playing the right position, the right spot for him. And I'm going to tell you, if LSU's not careful, you know he's just dying to have a big game against Louisiana State oh. University. So I, I'm kind of leaning toward LSU in this game, but I'm thinking of Speedy. I'm thinking that they're going to want to showcase Speedy. 
uh, to the television audience. And I'm thinking of the way LSU has stumbled. I'm going to have to make a quick decision before we make our picks in the next segment. You know, he's going to have to go against a real solid secondary for the LSU Tigers. The LSU Tigers have one of the best secondaries in all of college football. And I'm not talking about one player. I'm talking about four or five guys back there who can cover and play. And they're big and strong DB. So if Knowles is going to get a breakthrough game against an opponent like LSU and all Louisiana connections, uh, he better show something early against these guys. By the way, and in the totally worthless information category, I'll throw this out. Uh, the, the old boot, LSU and Arkansas, used to be the final game of the season. Again, this game between Texas A&M and LSU is going to become the big end of the season rivalry for these two schools. Well, I'm sure they'll make a Texas and Louisiana kind of a state here. They got to make some kind of award they give away for this. You know, I mean, who knows what they're going to give away? But it's a good game to finish on. It's on, uh, you know, uh, Thanksgiving night. Uh, like I said, I'll be there doing a game with Jack and Cheryl, former A&M coach. Uh, it's going to be, you know, 109,000 people should be at this football game. It's going to be an exciting game. LSU's got uh, every opportunity to go in there and win this football game against a pretty solid, they, they're both 74, good solid A&M team. And, and our spotlight is on uh, Speedy Nose, and he's got the name Speedy Nose for a reason. We'll find out. And maybe, just maybe, somebody, some drop-back quarterback in the state of Texas might see LSU come in and go, Wow, the Tigers need a drop back quarterback. I might have to call coach and see if he's interested. You think they might get the hint? Yeah, they need to get the hint right now. They need to find <laughs> a drop back quarterback. Uh, I just don't see this happening. I, I don't. I think Harris might play in this football game. Uh, I'm not sure he will. You know the problem with Harris, and I want to get your comment on this real quick. Everything I'm hearing out of Baton Rouge is that Harris is not a gamer. He's not a game player. He knows it. He's okay. He's not. He, he understands football, but when he gets in the game. Yeah. He gets nervous, whatever it is, he can't perform. Now, sometimes a player can go through a season, they get it the last game, they get it by a sophomore. Some players never get it until they're a senior year or their senior year. Some players never get it at all. Quickly, 30 seconds. I think you can you get, get it. I think you got to get him into the spring football practice and say, You're my man, uh, Jennings, you're, you're back up. You're the man. Go with it, see what happens. If he doesn't come through, come fall next season, you made a mistake, get a final quarter. Yeah, because he's got to become a player. If he's not a gamer, you got to admit you made a mistake, cut yes. your losses and go on. We will take a break, and when we come back, we'll be back with Mr. Robert Wyman talking about the great veteran Ford's deals, and then we'll also be making our selections. All of that's coming your way on the John Forcade Show, presented by Veterans Ford. Welcome back to the John 4K Show. Ken Berth a lot in from Mike Detillier, presented by Veterans Ford and the owner of Veterans Ford, visiting with us again on this segment of the show to talk about some fantastic deals for you. And we've got some great ones, John. You love to do this every week. I love to do this every week. So let's talk about the first fabulous deal up. And uh, with us again is Mr. Robert Weinman, the 2014 Focus Sedan, the MSRP. 23535 when you take a look at all of the savings and discounts you can walk away with the focus for 15745 wow that's amazing isn't it you know robert you look at these vehicles and you know a ford focus is ideal for the, the young person in your life if you have family and you want to go ahead you know if you want to go get these family members and look at him and say, hey, I got a son or a daughter, you know, perfect. They all want that glamour car, but you know, give them a little Ford Focus. What do you think of that? It is, but the styling is still great on the car and the fuel economy is super. So if you look at everything you get in the package for this vehicle for 157, you know, what do we have? 15745, what a, what a great opportunity on a, on a vehicle. I mean, the savings are super, the utilities great, the uh, fuel economy is great. So it's one of Ford's entry level vehicles, still is a great car. And uh, we've got it priced aggressively at Veterans Ford. And besides all of that, if a young man is driving to school, maybe that uh, oh, a young lady drive to school, a young lady driving yep. to school, or getting ready to go to college for the second semester, what a great time to get that focus and help them with gas mileage and, and great prices. The second deal of the day is if you've got somebody going to school and they want to drive a truck, yes, sorry, it's the F-150 Crew Cab. And with all of the discounts, Unbelievable, $29,900 to be able to get a crew cab for under $30,000 in today's world. Unbelievable. It is. And the best selling truck that's on the market, you know, again, you know, Veterans Ford is truck town. We're overstocked with inventory. I think we've got 260, 280 units in stock. 
we need to move these units. So we've got over $12,500 in discounts on this vehicle. You know, the F-150, 37 years running, best-selling truck. There's a reason for that. You know, come to Veterans Ford. We are truck town. You can go uptown, you can go downtown, Rivertown, Bucktown. But there's only one truck town. That's Veterans Ford. Come see us. And the Truckathon starts on December 12th. The 12th. 12th of December 12th is the Friday. Uh, we're having showing the new F-150. The um, it's um, we're gonna have a truck celebration. Uh, the aluminum F-150 is going to be on on show at uh, Friday, December 12th at Veterans Ford. Come see us. Come on, man, to Veterans Ford. I love it, and you can definitely purchase there. And our third and final deal of the day on the John Ford Cade Show presented by Veterans Ford is the Ford Escape, the 2014 Ford Escape. And again, the sale price after all the discounts and savings, unbelievable, $26,965. Another great car for going back to school, whether it's high school, college, or just somebody wanting a quality ride in a nice vehicle. It is, and what's great about this vehicle is the titanium version. And, and for this kind of price, this is a fantastic deal. Uh, the, the titanium has is tricked out with almost everything you can imagine. It's got the backup, um, the sensors on it. It's got the, uh, the My Ford Touch screen on it. So if you're looking for a great value in a vehicle, the, the Ford Escape of titanium is one for you. And of course, the Escape is one of the best-selling, not the best-selling vehicle in this class. Has been that way for years. Ford, again, is an uh, industry leader and veterans Ford. Come on, man, down to us and see the new Titanium. And the thing about an Escape, folks, you realize this, it's a mini SUV, so it's not the big SUV as you get an Explorer. It's a small one. My sister owns one, and she loves it, and trust me, it's got a lot of room there. If you got somebody going to school and from school, you can put your luggage and your books and whatever else you got there. You can seat five people comfortably. I know what you're talking about when it comes to Escape, and I'm a big man, and, you know, maybe not as big as Robert, but I can sit in an Escape just fine. Sure, now, you know, I'm 6'3", I have no problem getting in the vehicle, fitting in. It's, um, again, the fuel economy is there, the, uh, the styling is there, it's an industry leader. You know, uh, Ford, once again, has got a great product. Uh, we're not subject to all these recalls some of the other manufacturers are getting hit with. You know, again, Ford has done it right, they've, they've engineered their products well, it's on the cutting edge. If you haven't driven a Ford lately, come see the new Fords at Veterans Ford. Come on, man, down to Veterans Ford. Robert, thank you so much for visiting with us. We really appreciate it, and uh, have a great Thanksgiving. Well, thank you. I'll tell you, that Turkey Day is my favorite. You better believe it. Love it. Always a lot double of gobble. for Robert gobble, Weinman. Gobble. And again, we thank him for sponsoring this John Ford K Show presented by Veterans Ford and the owner, Robert Weinman. We'll be back with our picks and selections for this weekend right after this. Be back in a moment. Welcome back to the John Forcade Show presented by Veterans Ford. And since we're doing this show in the studio and we'll be back at Veterans Ford, Mike Dettelier back at Veterans Ford in the host chair next week, we've asked owner Robert Weinman to stay with us and make his picks along with John and I's picks uh, for the upcoming week. So we should have a lot of fun doing this. And uh, Robert, you're going in here with a clean record. 0-0. Oh oh. John is 0-0. Uh, oh uh, uh, who sure. knows just, what John is. Pick. It's bad. All right, let's talk <laughs> about Saints have to go to Pittsburgh. And, hey, I'm going to, on this one, pick Pittsburgh. It's a road game. They're going to beat the Saints 34-20. to I'm going to not pick the Saints on the road till they prove they can beat a good team on the road. They haven't done that yet. I'm going to go ahead and pick Pittsburgh as well on the road. I think the Saints are struggling right now. I don't know what's going to happen to all Saints. So we got uh, you for Pitt, me for Pitt, and Robert. With well, you. I'm going to pull for the Saints because I figure they can't win at home. Maybe they can win on the road. So uh, we'll go the other way. Even though we've got Spoken Roethlisberger way. there, okay. uh, let, let's go with the Saints because – yeah, you know, it's it's got to be reverse psychology. Dang. I tell you what, that's spoken like a true fan. You yeah, got you got to love that am. right there. How about LSU at Texas A&M on uh, Thanksgiving night? And this is one where I think LSU is going to go on the road. I think finally we might have Leonard Fournette doing something he's supposed to do. Jenkins might have a good night. Whether we see Brandon Harris or not, I don't know. But you know what? I think LSU pulls it out. Watch Speedy Noel, though. Speedy Noel from Edna Carr playing for Texas A&M. He's played in all but one game. He's having a pretty good year as a true freshman. I still think uh, LSU is going to win this one. Probably close. 30-28. to a and m wins this football game. LSU has no quarterback. I just don't see him going into Texas A&M. They're going to end on a sour note losing to, to A&M at a and uh, I'm going to go the other way. I think that uh, I think it's going to be LSU. They're going to dominate the line. They're going to establish a running game. Even though they don't have a passing game. Uh, and then they can play and LSU will pull it out through their running game. 
Got to throw in the Egg Bowl, even though we didn't talk about it, the Egg Bowl, oh, because yeah. it's Ole Miss in Mississippi State. And we have a <clears throat> former Ole Miss quarterback sitting over here. Uh, I think Mississippi State's going to teach you. Take, oh, you. take your boys out to the oh, shed and oh, give them a little lesson you, in spank. You need some A's. Bad. Uh, Ole Miss big in this football <laughs> game. The Rebels <laughs> will defend the Egg Bowl. Actually, they're going to get the Egg Bowl back after losing it last year. Ole Miss wins by two scores in this football game. I think it's going to be a scramble, but I think I'm with you. You're, you're going to have you're gonna, uh, your... Uh, look at my uh, man, yeah, a scramble. I like that one, a little scramble. And if you, want to, if you want to take the Iron Bowl into effect, you want to pick an Aub uh, Auburn, Alabama, Alabama is going to teach Auburn a lesson in this one. Alabama by two touchdowns. I got Alabama. I'm going to go reverse. I think it's going to be Auburn, and I don't think that's going to be popular, but nah, Auburn's going to pull one out. It's going to be All right, we're going to talk high school. Two, before we talk high school, okay. let me just say that Tulane is off this weekend. They can't weekend. lose this right, They can't lose this, can't but lose. let me say this. Southeastern. Tulane, we're going to talk about Southeastern in a minute. When Tulane plays Temple in a week, it's going to be the first time Tulane and Temple meet since the 1932 Sugar Bowl. We'll talk about that. Mike and you will talk about that next week. All right, Southeastern has to go on the road to play Sam Houston. Yeah, go real quick. And uh, Sam Houston's going to win it. Southeastern wins. Sam Houston. Right, high right, school, folks. We got to get a couple of quick school high school games. Week. Curtis and Brother Martin. I think uh, Curtis uh, again flexes its muscle and beats Brother Martin. Brother Martin upsets Curtis. No, I think it's going to be Curtis. They're in dynasty, and I think it will roll. But the game of the week, folks: Jesuit and Rummel. And uh, you, it's hard to pick against Rummel until Chase Forcade and Jay Roth lose a, a football game. Rummel Raiders, baby. I think it's going to be Jesuit. Oh and man! And by the way, that that game is on Sports Nola. SportsNola.com. It is a I web street game you, this weekend. I can't believe you took Jesuit. On the way home, hope you can stop the police officer for speed. Family loyalties. <laughs> That's going to wrap it up. Robert Ryman, thank you so very much Pleasure for be being with us today here in studio for presenting the John 4K Show. John, thank you very much. Mike Dettelier is back next week, folks, and he'll be sitting with John 4K talking about all of these picks. For Mike, for Robert, for John, and for all of you, thanks for being with us. Have a happy Thanksgiving, a great weekend. Ken Berth a lot here. Thanks for being with us, and good night.